Hey guys, it's Shane here from Tank and Miniatures, and today we're going to go over which Space Marine chapters you should use to make the most out of your tanks. Now, I've talked a lot about Space Marine tanks in general, and I've used a lot of them, but I've never gone through which detachments and which chapters really make best use of it, even though their codex has been out the longest, so yeah, let's get into it and really work this out. Now, I've only really gone through the main Space Marine Codex and playing armies from that. I haven't gone through the Space Marine chapters that have our own specific codex, so I thought we'd go through that first and see what's the best we can make out of that. Uh, so to start with the Black Templars, as you can imagine, this is a melee-focused type of army, so they're not really going to be able to make use of a lot of tank strategies. The Uphold the Emperor, I mean, that's good. That's going to give the feel no pain. That's always great. And uh, the Higher Leadership, yep. You can't say that's a bad ability for your tanks. Uh, the other things, the Repulses get the extra multi-melters. So, yeah, not the multi-melters are that great. But, yeah, having extra guns strapped to your transport tanks, that's pretty good. So, it's not that they're, they're a bad choice for tanks. It's very much that the armies. The tanks are there to support, they're not there to be the main focus. And that's, that's, yeah, that's exactly plays into their style, so. Tanks for Templars, just keep them in the background, don't make them the focus, and they'll do good. Now if we take a look at the Blood Angels, again, the Red Thirst ability isn't gonna super help tanks a whole lot, but, I mean, the extra strength to the weaponries, I mean, that's going to give you an extra mortal wound roll if you're going to tank shock, so that's cool. Uh, but overall, it's, yeah, not really the playstyle. I mean, that being said, the Ball Predator is a super good anti-infantry tank. And the fact that it has the assault against infantry, yeah, you can just speed this guy up and, yeah, burn out a lot of stuff. And it's going to work pretty good. I mean, having the twin assault cannon, you know, the twin linked, uh, you can really bank on the devastating wounds. That can make a difference if you got something really like a big blob, blob of terminators that you want to get rid of and you just need those devastating wounds just to pull them down and you yeah you just gotta whittle them down so yeah they have some good options but again it's not really the focus of the army it's it's just support now for the space wolves again it's really not going to be able to make use of this as their deeds of the worthy saga you know you need heroes you need guys to lead men and the vehicles are more or less independent. So you're not gonna be able to take advantage of their chapter ability. So yeah, it's not that they're bad, they're just, there's nothing there to specifically buff them and they don't have any special tanks anymore. Like it'd be really cool if you could give something a Hellfrost cannon like you could do with the Dreadnoughts. The Dreadnoughts are really good and really special. They got a lot of cool stuff with that. But they don't have anything tank wise. So it'd be good to see a return to that because they had the Iron Wolves detachment uh, back at the end of 7th, I think, and that was cool. So yeah, it's it's kind of a shame because they have had some very interesting tank weaponry over the years, but we're just not seeing that at all yet. Now, Death Watch isn't a bad choice because you have the mission tactics, which is similar to the Gladius Task Force, where you just pick the ability. And they're not bad abilities. They're just not specifically special, like it's not something you can already sort of get uh, with some other combinations. So it is still okay. So it's just, you also don't have any special stratagems you can use besides Armor of Contempt. So it's kind of a waste going full vehicle heavy with a Death Watch army. It's more about, yeah, your specialist kill strike squads. So yeah, we don't need to go too far into them. Now, something I regret I didn't look into further previously was Dark Angels, because Dark Angels are really good at having tanks. So, as you can see, I've just made up Army there, uh, which isn't going to be around much longer. I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, so, Grim Resolve, I mean, that's good. Like, as, it's going to be as good as tanks as it is on anything else, so that's pretty handy. It's, a, it's an all well round uh, good ability to have but not only that the strats are great with everything because they just affect uh studied units fire discipline is crazy good intractable you know you pull out and then you can still fire and still charge yeah so they're just they're just all good abilities like you can make use of anything uh they have their special 
the special land speeders, uh, they're really cool. I love the, the Raiden Wing, the Dark Shroud to give the cover. Uh, the Talon Master used to be really good, but he's not going to be around much longer. So we know he's being removed from the Codex, which is a real shame because he was really able to make a make a Death Star around this uh, really fast blob of land speeders. So that was really cool. So that's, uh, that's going to be annoying. I can't build this army anymore. <laughs> uh, the other thing that is really disappointing is the Ravenwing Land Speed of Vengeance. Uh, that's getting nerfed. So the plasma battery before used to be base 2 damage and you could overcharge it for 3, making it all round good at destroying everything. It was anti-large, anti-armor. You know, this guy could take out everything, but it's getting just turned into a normal twin-linked plasma cannon. So it's only anti-armor, anti-infantry now. You can't really rely on it to take out a big target, which is really a shame. But like, if you look at it, it looks like a massive plasma cannon that should be able to take out most things. But no, they decided that was too powerful. So that's a real shame. These things are not going to be as useful as they used to be. But overall, like I said, this is still a really strong army you can you can bring so i'm definitely gonna have to try this out at some point all right so let's look into our tank army for just making a normal codex compliant uh space marine tank list so let's start with the characters we've got two tech marines i found having three was a bit redundant like you're probably able to make better point use with something else so yeah just the two tech marines to buff and repair that should be about all you'll need now your base of the army three vindicators Three Vindicators can take out anything, literally anything. Uh, this is probably one of the most strongest units in the game. The best of points cost per actual damage dealing capacity. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to beat the Vindicator. It's so tough, it's so much potential. So yeah, three Vindicators, that's your base. Now your choice of land rate is gonna be pretty specific to what you feel you need. I always like the Redeemer because it's fantastic. It's the best flamers in the game with the AP 2 and 2 damage. Uh, melt at anything, so you just want to put it up front, have it ready to overwatch anything that comes near. Like it's just, it's good reliable overwatch and it's a good target. Uh, you can just send it out and it's, yeah, gonna absorb, it's gonna block shots. But if you wanted a long range one, just stick to the normal one with the last cannons. So yeah, I'd say the normal one or go the Redeemer. That's a good choice for Land Raider. Now speaking of the Laz Cannons, the Predator Annihilator I feel is a real good choice for being able to snipe out things from a distance. Uh, the Laz Cannons are really good. They have the really good ability to be really effective against large targets. I mean, you could swap this guy out for the Gladiator version instead, which is pretty much the exact same thing. They're just a little bit more costly. They do an average one extra damage. They have the extra wound. So there really isn't much difference between the Gladiator and the Predator. So it's really personal choice. Like it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a little bit better. So pretty much for point uh, cost to effectiveness, they're exactly the same. So do with that what you will. And just rounding it off, we have the two whirlwinds. You know, it's good to have some line of sight ignoring firepower. So this just gives you that versatility. It's pretty good strength, pretty good amount of shots. So Whirlwind's pretty reliable and they're pretty cheap as well. So it's not a bad choice uh, just to fill this guy out. All right, so now that we have our 1500 point tank army, let's look which detachment is gonna be the best to use. So let's start with the Gladius Task Force. So this was the original one that came uh, with the indexes still really good like it's good to have that flexibility of the different doctrines they really work well they they will work for all your tanks they will yeah really synergize well they got a couple of good strats you can use with it the adaptive strategy the storm of fire is fantastic you can really use that to make use of uh, any of the tanks and they're gonna really just destroy through something that uh yeah, cut through all their armor and all their defenses. So that can be really handy. So yeah, definitely a good choice. You can't really make use of any of the enhancements, but overall, still a good choice. Now the Anvil Siege Force. 
Uh, the trouble with this is not a lot of tanks have heavy weapons already. So you're not going to really be able to make use of the secondary ability to get the plus one to wound. That would be really insanely powerful for this. So just having the extra heavy added on to the weapons. There's a lot of ways to already get a, a buff to hit. Like the Tech Marines are already going to be doing that. You have a lot of things that's going to be giving you rerolls to hit. So I've never found the difference between Blissill 2 and 3 all that much different for Space Marines. There's a lot of ways to sort of counter that anyway. So it's, it's okay. It's not the best. They have a couple of good strategies, like getting the sustained hits on a stationary thing. But the problem is, yeah, like I said, you got to remain stationary. And for Space Marine vehicles, you want to be moving up. You want to be moving fast, you're getting into the right position. So you're really not going to be able to make use of a lot of these things until you're already in the right position. So start of turn two, three at the earliest. So I feel it's not the best you can do, but you know, you could make it work in certain, certain army builds. Now the Iron Storm Spearhead. As I've said before, this is the best. This is probably one of the most devastating detachments you can use for these guys. Uh, all the enhancements you can put on a Tech Marine are fantastic. Like pulling out and still being able to shoot and the ignoring damage. Like you can't go wrong with that. It all buffs the tanks. Um, having the guys be able to reroll the damage roll. I mean that takes, that makes the Vindicators, the LAS Cannons just so effective. Just you're always being you're always going to be reliably doing a lot of damage. So this is insanely devastating. This is probably one of the most powerful uh, army compositions you can bring. And I've done this. I've, I bring this many times. It's never done bad. I've never had a time where this doesn't kick butt. So yeah, if you want something that's the most devastating, th this is it. <laughs> you can't go wrong with this. Now the Firestorm Assault Force. At first, I thought, oh, that's kind of good, being able to give everything assault. But when you sort of break it down, do you really need the assault? It already moves pretty fast most of your tanks. And having the extra strength within 12, and being in within 12 is a dangerous place to be. You don't really want to be there with most things. But the plus one strength to the already high strength weaponry, it's not really going to make a difference in almost all cases. Uh, very rarely you'll get a plus one to wound from having that just plus one strength. It's not gonna be the most effective uh, situation. Uh, on top of that, the strats you can use are not great. Uh, the main one being the emolulation protocols, which can only be used on the Redeemer, and it's very costly for two CP, just to give it devastating wounds. It's, yeah, not the, not the best. Like, it looks good on paper, but in practice, these aren't really going to be a big factor in buffing up your army that much. Now, the Storm Lance, I feel I probably should have made a different loadout for them, because it very much supports not the larger tanks, mostly the Storm Speeders. Because most of the strats are for flying vehicles, which, yeah, are just the storm speeders now. Um, but yeah, going through what it can do for everything else, being able to charge when you advance and fell back. I mean, that can be good if you want to gain ground, if you want to quickly really get up the board fast, if you've got something you want to really pull in. Because like a Vindicator, he's going to be fine in combat because he's just going to shoot straight into it with his seed shield. So yeah, you can bolt that guy up, catch someone in combat, and still fire into it. That's pretty cool. So uh, aside from that, they got some. They do have some good strats. The blitzing fusillade giving the assault. So yeah, you can take advantage of that. You've assaulted out. You've you've charged forward, shot, then go into combat, and you're just holding him down. Uh, like I said, the the ride hard, ride fast. You know, you can give your you can give your storm speeder the 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 penalty to be hit and wounded. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's not a lot. You've had to make a very specific list to go around this. It's not going to be good for every kind of tank. So that's why it sort of loses points. It needs to be specific. It can't be a general uh, sort of tank army. 
Now, Vanguard Spearhead, really good. Like, for keeping your tanks always uh, basically smoked, using the smoke stratagem, it's really good, because you're always going to be pretty much at least 12 away from the enemy, because you've got a lot of long-range firing. So that just permanent shadow to just protect your tanks, that is pretty crazy. Yeah, you go into a real tower force with just, you're, you're shooting from long range, you're just dealing this damage and just not really being able to be hit. Definitely not a bad one, it's just sort of, it's sort of playing on autoplay. You're not really having to think too much into it to deal the damage, because none of the strats work here except for Armor of Contempt. You're gonna have a lot of command points you're just not really gonna be able to use. Because you're not going to need to smoke, you're not going to need to, uh... Definitely, like I said, it's powerful, it's just, it won't be the most fun and interesting army to play. And lastly, we're looking at the First Company Task Force. Now this brings back the old Oath of Moment ability, we can reroll the wound as well. So definitely powerful, like everyone can make use of this, same as everything else. I just feel this is a bit meh of a whole ability for the task force it'd be good if this was just like a two point stratagem that you'd have to pay for to get it feels a bit like once per game what else are you going to be making use of like why would you take the task force uh because the other strats yeah you can't use any of these for the tanks so yeah i feel this is definitely for something else but you know it's gonna work it's gonna work for all these things it's just not that interesting of a force you could be bringing. Okay, so when we look at the rankings of which is worst to best, you've got the Storm Lance, because yeah, it's not really gonna be that useful to be able to charge into combat when you're not really a combat army. Firestorm, the Assault, isn't really that useful when you're already fast and you're already strong. Uh, First Company, like I said, the main ability is a bit dull. Uh, Anvil is good, but it sort of keeps you in one place for too long. Gladius, that's your normal one. That gives good versatility, be able to, you know, think of ways to overcome a problem. Vanguard is just um, playing on easy mode, so that's definitely going to be strong. And best, Ironstorm just deals the most damage uh, and just really helps a tank it's it's exactly what it was made for and it works better than anything else so there you go guys that's how you play tanks in 10th edition for your space marines it's very surprised that it took me so long to make this video when i made the other ones of the similar type i was going to do one on dark angel specifically i might do a short one when the codex actually comes out like i've seen what's in it it's not great i don't think it's yeah, I think what people are upset about for Dark Angels, that's pretty warranted. Uh, but overall, yeah, Space Marines still in a really powerful place. Uh, yeah, so when other codexes come out, I'll keep doing these. Uh, but until then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.